Hey guys, as you probably know, Dead by Daylight released its 16th chapter, Silent Hill, to the public servers some two weeks ago. Now this chapter included Pyramid Head, who has been a real thorn in my backside since release, and I'm sure he's been a struggle for some of you out there as well. Now, I wanted to put together a bit of a guide from what I've learned over the last couple of weeks from studying both his uh, the strict numbers as well as gameplay tips and tricks to survive a chase just that little bit longer. Now, the way this video is going to work is I'm going to start with basic overview of Pyramid Head, because if you're going to counter him, you've really got to understand what you're countering. Now, if you already know the basics of Pyramid Head, you can skip to this timestamp here. It should take you to the advanced tips and tricks, as well as uh, continuing on to some gameplay uh, examples of how to beat Pyramid Head. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll be able to hold your own against Pyramid Head, if you couldn't already. And if you felt I missed anything, please let me know in the comments below, or continue the discussion over on my Twitch channel, which I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9am Australian Eastern Standard Time, link in the description below. This guide aims to cover the general games you'll play. It isn't going to cover every single pyramid head you're going to face. Hopefully it'll help you with a majority of them. Basics first guys, the bare bones basics. Okay, Pyramid head moves at 4.6 meters per second. It is the typical killer movement speed, the same as a hillbilly, wraith, trapper, all the works. Any killer that isn't slower is typically this 4.6 movement speed. He has a typical terror radius of 32 meters. Again, same as the hillbilly, trapper, um, an uncloaked wraith, and he is a tall killer. <laughs> you would be able to tell by that in game. He's a giant cone on his head. You really can't miss the guy. Now let's get into the intricacies of his ability. There's a lot of text here, I'm not going to read it out for you, but I will go into a bit of depth onto the stuff I want to cover here. So, for those who don't know, his ability, Rites of Judgment, does this sort of slicing into the ground motion. He stabs the ground and pulls his sword along the ground, leaving a, a, a trail, if you will. Should a survivor walk or run, over one of the trails left by Pyramid Head, they will be afflicted with Torment and trigger Killer Instinct. Killer Instinct is similar to what Legion experiences. The heartbeat of the survivor kind of fills the, the, the audio cue for the killer and they get an exact location on the survivor as like a visual prompt. Survivors seem to be able to step relatively close to the trails without being tormented. Of course, should the survivor crouch walk over the trail, they are not afflicted with torment, nor does Killer Instinct activate. Now, we'll get back to torment and why that is important in a little bit. Let's get into the numbers. It takes one second for Pyramid Head to activate the ability, and he could hold for a further five seconds. The timer on the ability slows down should Pyramid Head choose to stand still. These trails last up to 75 seconds. Should the trail be within four meters of a hook or generator, the trail will remain for three seconds, then immediately disappear. Should the trail be within three meters of the hatch or exit gate switch, it also disappears after three seconds. It seems the trail also disappears after three seconds when Pyramid Head performs the ability upstairs or downstairs. Now there is a second part of this ability, it is a special attack, Punishment of the Damned. What this ability does is Pyramid Head can fire a, uh, a beam, if you will, of damage through objects to hit anyone in a line ahead of him. For those unaware, the special attack can travel through walls, through pallets, through windows in a straight line for 8 meters, damaging any survivor it comes in contact with. Pyramid Head's movement speed is severely decreased after using his special attack punishment of the damned. This leads to the survivor gaining valuable distance should they successfully dodge one of the attacks of Pyramid Head. Now I've put together a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison of 
the survivor's movement speed versus pyramid heads when running normally, when using the trail uh, ability, and when he fires the attack ability. So you can kind of get an idea of just how much distance you're going to gain should you dodge the ability. And that pyramid head is still able to outrun you while charging his ability. Now in my research, I was unable to find an exact number on how high the spikes on Punishment of the Damned are. So effectively, how high above it do you need to be to avoid the damage? So I did a number of experiments in game, which you're seeing on screen now. And it's actually quite, uh, quite forgiving on the survivor's side. The spikes that appear out of the ground seem more as a visual presence than a actual indication of the damage range. As you can see here, the spike seems to go through Cheryl, but doesn't actually damage her. This comes with a bit of a glitch. Um, I don't know if it's a glitch or if it's similar to how the Doctor sort of functions. When the ability line, if you will, hits a upward slope, unless it seems to have a certain coding to it, it appears it just goes through it as if it's an object. This also appears to work on staircases, on like the basement staircase, uh, it doesn't go up the stairs, however downstairs it does work, which is a little concerning. I'm not sure, I'm not sure why the coding uh, works downstairs, but upstairs, same with uh, the hills, it seems to go down the hill, not up the hill. However, I have found a number of examples where the ability simply will not spawn despite Pyramid Head attempting to use it. It appears this only occurs when there isn't enough ground uh, immediately in front of Pyramid Head for the ability to spawn onto. As you can see here, Pyramid Head is using his ability. I am directly in front of him on a slight upward slope and this ability does not hit me. As of today's patch, the 4th anniversary of Dead by Daylight, this is the 28th of June uh, 2020, this ability does not work in certain situations and possibly could be the difference between you living and dying as a survivor. Of course, if you're that close to Pyramid Head, he may just mouse one you, but if he goes for a fancy ability use, you've got him. Now, as you can see here, Pyramid Head uses his ability and it initially travels down. However, when faced with the challenge of going up, it favors to go through the object slightly under the floorboards. The attack doesn't seem to have the ability to travel uphill. Now, I'd like to talk for a little bit about Torment. Torment allows Pyramid Head to send you to a cage of atonement when you're in a dying state, of course. Now, if you think about this, that means for every survivor that is tormented, every survivor that goes to the cage of atonement, the killer saves valuable seconds, valuable, valuable moments where they can deal with, with you. They can get you out of here. They can put you on a hook, a hook equivalent and not be punished. Now, if they don't send you to the Cage of Atonement early, the survivors have no way of escaping torment, and they will be tormented until either A, a survivor is sent to a Cage of Atonement and they rescue them, or B, they are sent to a Cage of Atonement and they are rescued. Which means, because of the little action at the end, which allows Pyramid Head to perform a mini Mori on a survivor that is left on the ground uh, and they're on their final hook state. Like if they were to be hooked, they would be instantly killed or instantly sacrificed. That is again, valuable time at the end of the game. At the end of the game, you catch a survivor, you instantly kill them, you're right back into catching the remaining three. A pyramid head that gets everyone tormented by so much time. And they gain such a big advantage over every other killer in their game. They avoid the one thing that gives survivors a bit of security, which is that phase of, okay, the killer has just picked up a survivor. I've got about five, 10 seconds of freedom. 
I don't have to worry. I know the killer cannot kill me right now. Pyramid Head rips that away and says, nope, I'm right back. Where are you again? Now, the Cages of Atonement do not count as hooks for the purposes of perks. So I've put together a, a list of all the perks that will not work with the cages for one way or another. Now that doesn't mean the perk is completely useless, but it does mean that there is an element of it that is impacted by the implementation of cages rather than a simple hooked survivor. So these perks include Deliverance, Decisive Strike, Will Make It, Kindred, uh, slippery meat breakout, uh, like for the purpose of the pyramid head, isn't picking up a survivor. So if he isn't picking up a survivor, you can't use breakout to try and rescue them sooner. Uh, second wind, uh, boil over, we will get, we're going to live forever, if that's what it's called. All of these perks require either A, you to be on the hook, B, on the back of a killer, or C, rescuing a survivor from a hook. Now on the flip side, I've also put together a list of killer perks that will not work with the Cages of Atonement. So this might help you keep in mind that these perks are less likely to be run by Pyramid Head, which could influence your strategies and movements throughout the game. These include, but are not limited to, Make Your Choice, Pop Goes the Weasel, Agitation, Barbecue and Chili, Blood Warden, Devour Hope, Furtive Chase, Mad Grit, uh, even garbage perks like uh, Blood Echo and Hangman's Trick, you kind of know they're probably not going to be around. They're not awful, but you know, they're not they're not really, they're probably not going to be used by a uh, pyramid head. And in my opinion, this is fair. This is fine. I've heard a lot of backlash about this. I have no qualms with this being an addition to the game because it's about time some of these stronger perks have a little bit of, but not always, added to them. Now, since his release to the public servers, there was an update put out to counter Pyramid Head's tendency to camp around survivors in a cage, since a lot of the typical counter perks to camping killers did not apply to the cages. There was very limited counterplay the survivors could play, and it turned into a sacrifice or all four survivors going down in an attempt to rescue the one altruistic uh, death pool, if you will. Now, there are two elements to this update that countered pyramid heads that camped around the cages. The first was that pyramid heads' ability to see the cages after sending a survivor to the Cage of Atonement was removed. The second was should pyramid heads stumble upon the cages anyway, after a set amount of time, I believe between five to eight seconds, the cage descends and respawns elsewhere with the survivor still inside of it. These updates appear to have had a successful effect on preventing this toxic pyramid head strategy. And I'm pleased with the, uh, with the enforcement of the update. So now we understand what pyramid head can do. Let's talk about some of the advanced tactics you can implement into your own gameplay today so that next time you face pyramid head you'll have a bit of an easier time hopefully escape unscathed now i've taken the liberty of putting together a couple of clips that highlight both common mistakes made in chases against pyramid head as well as some uh, some nice little tricks you can uh, try in your own games against him now, as you'll notice, none of these clips have any perks. So this is uh, this is information and tricks that you can uh, you can implement into your gameplay today. It doesn't require any prior experience with the game. Now, as I run into this killer shack here, I notice that the uh, the ruined totem is inside the killer shack, and I'm faced with a decision here. Now, we saw Pyramid Head use his torment ability or the, the trail ability at uh, the base of the palace around Killer Shack. I have a, a solid amount of distance between myself and Pyramid Head at this point in time. And I did have the choice to loop back around uh, Killer Shack, as you might typically do against any other killer. But because uh, Pyramid Head used his torment trail around that pallet, I made the decision to run away. In my opinion, you're better off running away from a loop or risking yourself out in an open field or open space than you are to run back through and accept a torment uh, trail. As should you be caught, 
you're going to be giving Pyramid Head major advantage through being able to send you to a cage, saving uh, valuable valuable seconds in the game, as well as uh, countering any potential perks you might be running. I'm talking Decisive Strike, Borrowed Time, uh, Deliverance, any of the other perks uh, that, that are revolve around rescuing or saving survivors or getting off the hook. The second reason I ran away from the Killer Shack was uh, spotting that Ruin Totem. Taking Pyramid Head away from Killer Shack leaves my teammates the uh, uh, the ability to jump in there, take out Ruin, should they see it themselves. I wasn't in communication with my teammates, so it's very possible that they won't see the totem at all and I'll have to double back and get it. Either way, I'm giving them the chance by running away. We continue the chase, and I'm faced with a decision here. We're around the, uh, the L and T shape uh, jungle gym here, and I'm going to go for this window. I had the choice of looping around the left, which I left the, uh, to the left over in this little gap here. Running to the left uh, would have opened my ability to run around the outside of the L shape gym and double back towards the T side on my right here. That might have been a mistake, uh, in my opinion, Taking this window before Pyramid Head is close enough to guarantee his the hit of his uh, ranged attack. It leaves uh, it leaves me enough time to get there, vault the window quickly, and dart away from the window, as the distance wasn't I had enough distance between myself and Pyramid Head that he couldn't guarantee using his ability the moment he had the chance. So we'll let it play, and you'll see what I'm talking about. He tries to use it, but he was just a little bit too far behind, and yeah, I bait out the. Uh, the angle and run away from that window now here I had a, another important decision and I think I made a mistake here I could have looped around this this uh, this wall and either taken the window or ducked around to the right to the pallet that we know is to my right the game hasn't been going long enough for that pallet to have been used uh, by anyone else I was the first survivor to be chased for a significant amount of time I made the decision to loop around the long way and I thought I could pull the pallet and then make it to this window and double back towards uh, the pallet we just passed in the uh, the moments earlier. I believe this was a mistake as you'll see when I play it out I don't get a fast fold on this window running in this diagonal motion and it also gives Pyramid Head the chance to catch up using his uh, catch up and force my hand using his ability to either use it in attack or mouse one me. I made a mistake here in not pulling the pallet as well. I didn't want to use it if I didn't have to. And I don't get the fast fault. Not that the fast fault would have mattered anyway. Now here I make an, a, a, a nice little juke where I pretend to go out to the left and he falls for it and doubles away. Gaining valuable, uh, valuable distance. Unfortunately, I don't play around the pallet I just passed and I am now stuck between a rock and a hard place. Luckily, I'm awesome, and I do an awesome little, I don't know, spin or pyramid head makes a mistake, but again, under panic, no perks, no dead hard, I go down without much trouble on pyramid head's uh, side. There were some key moments in that chase that could have led to uh, me prolonging my uh, the chase, prolonging the amount of time my teammates had to work on other generators. I have plenty of time to think about those mistakes. However, as you'll see in the upcoming chases, it doesn't do me a lot of good. I get rescued and I heal up and I'm once again straight back in the chase with Pyramid Head. I try to bait out... I, 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 I try to bait him out into predicting my movements, but he just runs in a straight line and catches me. And now I'm caught around this, uh, this, this pretty poor loop against Pyramid Head. He's used his Torment Trail. I can't go back. Now some pyramid head, uh, pyramid heads pre uh, setup of using his torment at the base of this pallet earlier. That little amount of trail has, prevents me from going for the pallet, and even if I went for it, he'd likely hit me with his ability anyway, his ranged attack. I wanted, to, I wanted to avoid the torment, so I run away. Of course, it doesn't help me. I try to dodge in any potential attacks, do a 360, fail miserably, but I do set myself up the ability for Nia to get a torch save. She does miss it, but hey, we tried. If you look at the amount of time I'm, I'm saving for my team here, 
It's a little unfortunate because two of my teammates are trying to prevent me from getting to a hook. However, the amount of time, uh, the amount of distance between where I went down and this hook was too small and taking multiple hits was just a uh, mistake in the end. However, as you can see, my teammate over the left here that's in the killer shack is getting the totem. And should I have been caged or tormented and he sent me to the cage, there's a, a good chance he would have gone and checked out that totem and prevented us getting the ruin. Fortunately, there's enough time because of the, uh, the, the decision to go on the, to avoid torment and get on this hook for that totem to go down. Which is fantastic for my team. I spent the time healing Nia up. It took, some, it took a fair while, but I think it's going to be worth it. And Pyramid Head finds me relatively quickly. Now, fortunately, I'm in a, a pretty good position here. Uh, it's around the Fractured Cow Shed. I give uh, enough distance here that Pyramid Head tries to cut me off and he uses his ability to cut off that loop. I run away and I head around the broad side of the barn, which fortunately I was able to hit. I had a window, but I chose uh, to pass up on it. And Pyramid Head, I think, predicted that I would go through the window and made a mistake in uh, pursuing that. Now, at this point, I know there is a pallet in this little gap here, as if there wasn't a pallet here, this would be a window. Uh, knowing your loops goes a long way against a character like Pyramid Head, against any killer, but specifically Pyramid Head, I've, uh, against Pyramid Head. I have a nice pallet here, and I get some good distance as he mind games himself a little bit around it. And as I go around here, I take it a bit wide, and I dig myself a bit of a grave. We pass in the air, and Pyramid Head decides to chase after her instead. Now we get the heal up and the Claudette from earlier uh, goes down. Now we can see that she's tormented and there is a, a, a decision here that Pyramid Head, Head has to make. Does he send her to the cage and get straight back into the action? Or does he pick her up, chuck her on a hook and give us valuable time on generators? I set myself up to be quite a solid distance away from her. After seeing her go down, I, uh, I pointed at the right here and I try to Set, I, I try to indicate to my teammates to work on the generators and I'll get the save on uh, on our teammate regardless of if it's a cage or a hook. Fortunately for me, it's a, uh, it's a cage. And Pyramid Head sends her straight to the cage that appears right next to me, which is just fantastic. I didn't get many opportunities in this game. I wanted to play around the hay uh, baler, whatever this is called, the hay dispenser machine. Uh, I was hoping... To test out my my strategies, I'd kind of learnt about when we were, when we were preparing and, and looking at where Pyramid Head could use his uh, ranged ability on. As I was aware that you couldn't use Pyramid Head's attack up the uh, up the 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 main entry point for the dispenser, nor could you use it to hit someone on the hay bale upwards um, from the base. So here, Pyramid Head tries to do his little a little fancy cut off, but doesn't quite get it. He doesn't do the attack. And second time to Charmy gets across. Now he seems to fail the, 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 the continue, the next attack, and we go for the second lap. I've got enough distance to make this a second time. And he falls down for some reason. He couldn't hit me with his ability even if he tried. From my tests, I was aware of that. So I know this is a pretty strong loop for me. Unfortunately, I lose a little bit of time, a little bit of distance here. But I do a nice spin. Now, if at this point... If Pyramid Head hits me and I run straight towards the door, I get out. But because I'm being fancy, trying to be trying to be show off for my video, I try to do a 360, fail, and run in the wrong direction, losing valuable distance, valuable time. And in the end, well, I'm sure you can see what's going to happen here. There isn't enough time to get out. And those extra seconds I spent running away... Ugh! Okay, so in the second example, we're about halfway into the game. Team out on hook. I want to be taking the killer as far away from the hook as possible, giving uh, our friend Deno enough chance, enough uh, enough time to be able to escape and continue with their own game. Now, I'm at this uh, this important point in the loop. I could head out to the right, go for the window. Problem with the window is I'm a locked animation. Pyramid Head has an attack that can go through windows. Locking myself into that animation is all but a guaranteed attack. If not, a guaranteed attack from Mouse Ones if I, I can't make the distance. So, fortunately, Pyramid Head makes a mistake here. He goes for an attack that uh, that he really shouldn't have. And I 
I do a bit of a cocky survivor thing here where I don't just keep running away. I wait to see him and I, I, I wait around. And by waiting around, guess what? I lose my distance. I don't have perks. I don't have the skill or the ability to be being a show off like that. I go for this window. I manage to dodge it. Lucky I, uh, I pulled that one off and we're heading into killer shack zone. Now from earlier in that, that previous example, we know Pyramid Head is going to use his ability to try and discourage any of you the chases. The chases, fortunately, instead of just cancelling and mouse wanting me, he tries to go for the fancy attack. He might be a bit of a newer Pyramid Head. I bait out uh, the pallet. He goes to the attack. I make the window. And instead of running back towards the killer shack, I decide to try and fade away. I use the tree to gain just an extra few seconds before my hit. And I fail my 360. Now here's where my mistake came in. Instead of continuing like taking the hit and running off into the direction I hadn't just been, I'm now faced with the decision. Do I go for the window, play around Killer Shack, even though I will likely end up being tormented or forced into a corner and die? Do I try my luck and run away from Killer Shack? Do I just bite the bullet, get tormented? In the end, I make the worst possible decision. I don't go towards the window. I play around wide where I can't step on something on, on those little but he of course can and I go down without even much fight and that's really frustrating and it was very avoidable simply accepting my fate and taking the hit and running away now I want to talk a little bit about the killer's ability blind spots while you're in a chase against pyramid head breaking line of sight is very very valuable by breaking line of sight you're giving pyramid head the choice of either a predict using his ability and you can predict that he's going to predict where you're going to go change direction be unpredictable as we we're talking about earlier or b he will just chase normally and you'll be able to play around a, a loop that has the line of sight breaks and get a giant a, a quite a large advantage over pyramid head at least his ability becomes more of a gamble rather than a guaranteed hit so i'll give you an example here Pyramid Head tries to use his ability here, predicts wrong. So here I, I've broken line of sight. Pyramid Head is on the other side of this wall. He could be charging up his ability. We haven't heard it, so we know he isn't, but he could charge it up and predict I'm gonna head around to the right, which would be the typical loop. I'm already tormented, so his torment really doesn't mean a lot except for giving uh, Killer Instinct notifications. Uh, or I could continue straight. I could even have not gone to the pallet at all and gone wide of the pallet and continued around to the right. Uh, he doesn't use his ability here. I duck away using that valuable line of sight break and he doesn't uh, he doesn't see me. I, mean, I actually gain uh, a, quite a large advantage in this chase. I could, have, I could have escaped, if this had been a serious situation, I could have escaped uh, and made it out without even worrying, without even worrying about him catching me. Fortunately, I mean, in this case, I wasn't, too worried if I die I die if I live I live I just wanted to practice chases against pyramid head for the video so he double back around to the loop we saw earlier this is a couple of nice line of sight break points and he once again tries to predict my movements he goes the opposite direction and we're listening we're trying to hear for his uh his his attack animation the, the sword going to the ground to indicate he's going to attack now here it's a little bit interesting he goes for an attack and misses. And here, I he doesn't have direct line of sight on me. Doors open. If he uses his ability to attack me, I should probably make it out. I'm not really sure. He does see these little trails on the ground. Better see which way I've gone. It does leave a little trail behind you when you're tormented. But I'm not sure a lot of pyramid heads are actively watching for that. Now he tries to use his ability here and predicts correctly. I was very lucky here in that he doesn't have a rush range to minus one. He tries to predict, and I get lucky and make it out. Uh, On to our third example. Now, Pyramid Head finds me here without much difficulty, and I make a critical error. He just used his ability, which means there is a little bit of torment trail at the base of this, uh, of this uh, loop. Now, I didn't realize that. And I managed to run straight down and right into it and get myself tormented, which isn't good. I do not want that at all. Pyramid Head doesn't seem to want to break the pallet and he keeps going for predictions. 
Uh, this is the importance of being unpredictable. Instead of just running in a straight line around the loop, you've practiced against every other killer. Be unpredictable. Play as if you're, uh, as if you're just you're new to the game. You don't even know where the right way to go is. You're just going wherever you think looks cool. And by doing that, Pyramid Head, his ability becomes a gamble every single time. Now, by Pyr when Pyramid Head uses his ability as well, as we talked about earlier, his movement speed is significantly decreased and he has to put his sword back into the ground. It's about a three to four seconds stun. I think it's about three seconds. Uh, and you gain significant distance. Simply dodging his ability continues, gives you the ability to continue a chase for another, I guess, 15, 20 seconds at least for him to be able to catch, make that, that time back up by walking normally. Now, Killer Instinct gives him the exact location here. And he decides to break the pallet as it was a difficult loop for him to hit his ability on. I break away and I head to this lovely little area here, which has upstairs and downstairs. He tries to hit with his ability here and simply running back into him. He tries to use his ability. He could have canceled a mouse one, but he didn't. And he goes for his attack again. I outrun it this time. It's like he predicted I'd run back and I use the Killer Instinct here and double back without him... Uh, without him realizing or seeing exactly where I was. I make a mistake here. I could have doubled back uh, and followed where he went, but instead he instead he must have seen some old scratch marks. And we're back in this nice little loop with the upstairs and downstairs locations. This becomes literally a mouse one killer chasing after me. He can use his ability downstairs if my tests earlier uh, prove anything. And I make a mistake here. I run straight into it and let and uh, and get hit. I'm upstairs and I have a nice advantage. I'm trying to continue using this loop. And this is, I, I believe, in this entire chase. How long has this chase been going? What, a, a minute? minute and a half? I'm not sure how long I've been being chased for so far. I haven't used a single pallet. That pallet that, was, uh, that I was played around initially was already down. Someone else used that in an earlier chase. So... I've managed to survive a, a lot of a lot of time without using a single pallet, just pretending to use them, dodging his ability, using that movement speed and that that uh, advantageous moment for me. Now I wasn't familiar with these. Uh, with I'm not great on this map in particular, and I think this is a, a consistent issue. But when I ran down these stairs, I get airborne, and instead of being able to tightly hug the corner to make the pallet, I instead go airborne and have to land, which causes me to get hit. He might have caught me anyway. We'll never know. Uh, and <laughs> this is just an example of what not to do, please. Because I got tormented earlier, this is an example of like torment is so frustrating. I was, uh, this was my first hook and my teammates didn't rescue me for the entire time. I didn't even try and escape. I've been on hook for about a minute and a half at this point. My teammate finally comes in and saves me right at the same time Pyramid Head's here. She cuts me off, I get hit. And there's not even, if I was running Decisive Strike, if I was running any kind of defensive perks, it wouldn't matter. I'm tormented, and I'm dead just like that. Pyramid Head straight back in the game. No, no, you know, the only thing he has to worry about now is three survivors, not even a fourth member to worry about. Really frustrating for me. Okay, so I wanted to take the time to show you some of the common loops Pyramid Head plays, uh, how Pyramid Head plays some of these common loops. So I find Nia here, and I use my Torment just for a second. So should she loop around to the left again, she gets hit and uh, she runs back in that direction. Now she's going to walk over my Torment, which gives me Killer Instinct and an advantage should I finally catch her. When I do catch her, she gets sent straight to the cage, and I save valuable time. I'll be uploading more games against Pyramid Head, likely as uh, as full-on gameplay examples, so you can see from start to finish everything that we do, every tip, every trick. Uh, I don't consider myself an expert, but I am researched. I'm well educated in the character. It's important to remember that there is a player on the other side of the computer, a person that is likely experienced in the game, and they are looking for any amount of just small thing that could be the cause of their predicting uh, them predicting a survivor's <laughs> movements. Uh, now, a little a great example here. It works on the opposite end here, too. So, in this little moment, he sees me about to duck behind this window. Uh, so, about duck behind this wall. Now, the, I'll play this in just a second. Look at what Pyramid Head's Pyramid Head does here with his movement. 
I think he's about to duck back and, and, and counter and cut me off from going around the long way. Look at what he does here. He moves to the right, he moves to his left, my right. He looks, he, he turn, moves to his left. I almost felt that might have been an indication that he was about to um, walk, moonwalk back around and cut me off. I can't see him through these little gaps and I wasn't, you know, it went quite quickly anyway, so I didn't see him regardless. And in the end, I made the mistake. He just kept running straight and I got caught for it. The power of suggestion in Dead by Daylight can't be understated. Pyramid Head tried to do something. Uh, Pyramid Head suggests what he's going to do and I reacted because of it. Same goes uh, in the opposite direction. I, I tried to make suggest I was cutting around to the left so that he would use his ability, miss, and I would gain distance. He didn't use his ability. He was he was clever. And because I doubled back, I lost my the distance I did have. And I get caught regardless, trying to do a fancy 360. We see later in the game, when we play around, when I'm playing around the fractured cow shed here, just how powerful the power of suggestion is. Look at this from the survivor perspective. Pyramid Head finds us. I run towards the, the, uh, the fractured cow shed and there's a little door here. Pyramid Head knows that and he wants to, he wants to predict, he wants to cut me off as I either A, go for that window I just passed or I loop around to my right. He tries to cut me off and I mean, it was his mistake, but he also cuts it off with his trail of torment there. This dude was experienced enough to know what to do in these situations. Now, once again, it looks like I'm going to go for the window. I don't. I duck away. Pyramid head loses valuable distance. And I'm able to make it out to this hay bale to an entire another loop. I would have died. I'll remember, I was on my death hook at this point in the game. I've got no perks. It takes two hits and I'm out. I can't afford to be making mistakes. I can't afford to be taking hits. But I'm a very risky player. I, I take as many risks as possible because it feels so good when you pull off those nice like you thought I was doing this, I'm actually doing this. Haha, -ha, valuable distance. I tried to bait out uh, his attack there, but I did bait him out into running around the long way of that loop, which again gains me valuable distance. Power of suggestion, he cuts me off, valuable distance again. If he chased me in a straight line this entire time, right behind me, he would have caught me, what, 30 seconds earlier, I would hazard a guess, if he just chased me the way I ran. I haven't used any resources except for I've suggested I will use resources. And finally, when he does actually just chase me in a straight line and he doesn't fall for my suggestion, he gets hit. He gets the hit. I was lucky enough not to go, not to get hit by that torment. I see the torment inside here and I avoid it. If there's one thing you can take away from this, uh, from this guide uh, against Pyramid Head, is this killer more than any? is punished by the power of suggestion. Suggesting you're going to go one way, encouraging him to use his ability when he shouldn't, baiting them into making mistakes. Pyramid Head gets a, literally a three second, uh, a three second, Pyramid Head gains a three second stun, if you will, of punishment for missing his ability, for, for using it and failing. That is more, that is a bigger inbuilt punishment than any other killer. Any other killer can, you know, predict you're going to run around the other way and run around the other way, but they'll still be somewhat near you in the loop. They don't get stunned because they missed their ability. I mean, I suppose like Hillbilly does if they try to go for the chainsaw or whatever and misses Bubba and whatnot, but we're not talking about that. The importance of being unpredictable suggesting the killer you're going to go one way, baiting around the other way. That's what I want you to take away from this video. I've given you a lot of other information about the character Pyramid Head and little tips and little moments that you might keep in your brain and go, oh, he's trying to use his ability on the hay dispenser thingy. I know that he can't physically, I know that he can't physically hit me with that ability on this, uh, on this hay dispenser. So I know I can take this window safely. I know I can stand on this hay bale and he can't hit me with his attack. I've seen it. Plumber's tutorial guide thing told me that. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed today's video. 
I will, as I said, be uploading, I will be uploading more videos, uh, more tutorial videos, maybe including commentary as I play against a variety of killers, Pyramid Head included, as well as uh, other videos such as my Doing the Dwight Thing series you might have seen up on the YouTube channel, uh, IRL, kind of Dead by Daylight skits, uh, where I dress up as the characters and uh, have a bit of fun pretending and reliving some classic Dead by Daylight moments that I'm sure many of you have also experienced. Uh, so we'll be continuing series like that. And if you have any other ideas for, for uh, future content, please let me know in the comments below. If there's a killer you're struggling with, please comment. Uh, and I can, uh, I can give you a bit of an idea of how to, uh, how to take on that killer as well. Pyramid Head is just the first of many since he, uh, was recently released. I thought it made sense to go with him first. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, plum out.